Hey, it's Chris, Luigi Games. You know the time, you know the place. It's the upcoming video for next week's launching crowdfunding games. What do you need to know? What do you need to know about them? A little bit of a blurb, a little bit of a opinion, and a little bit of everything else in between. Now, it's the end of November. You would normally think post Thanksgiving, post Turkey craze, post Black Friday, that, you know, things are kind of calming down. But the first week or two here at the very end of November and the first week of December here are not actually as quiet down as you may think otherwise. So let's get right into it. First up this week, we actually have Empires and two to four players from Brotherwise Games from John DeClaire. This is, instead of your normal Civ Builder, a little bit of a spin on what you would normally expect. Instead of the Empire going up and up and up, you're actually trying to save it from collapse. And so you're gonna try to keep Calamity at bay. You're gonna be trying to use reverse bidding with an engine build with long-term planning to avoid these calamities because what you're doing is you're starting at the height of the power and you're getting through various phases. You're gonna be progressing and there's a disaster phase. You're gonna face a common threat. You're gonna to have to bid and who ends up bidding the most ends up taking the disaster. And so you have to mitigate the disaster. But when you get the disaster, you also get a significant upgrade. You get a significant bonus that's going to benefit your civilization. And so that's the trade-off in this game. You're gonna grow in wisdom and resilience through calamity. And so the style of this game is going to be, you know, ultimately whoever can adapt the most through the problems that are presented to them is going to end up being the winner. You're going to have a progress track as you go along that you're going to have to face disasters, you're going to have to face events, you're going to gain new resources during production phase, gain lost territories as you rebuild, and you're also going to have some sort of challenging head-to-head -head military phase. So this one is probably my top to watch of the week. This is my most likely to back at this point. Uh, but that being said, I don't really know what Brotherwise is going to bring. I'm not sure exclusivity. I'm not sure price point. I'm not sure deluxifications. So those are always going to be the make it or break it with a game like this. You know, it's probably going to end up in my collection at some point if the gameplay actually holds true to what I think it is and what it actually is on the table. But is it going to be a retail or a crowdfunding? That is the main key. And there's a couple of those recently that I really have done the same thing on. So we'll kind of see what Brotherwise has in store for us. Uh, the next one, Brother Ming, not Brother Wise, Brother Ming is launching. And if you're familiar with Brother Ming, you may remember them when I did the review of the Fire Emblem game. Now we have uh, React, React. So you are skirmish style, two players battling head to head with magical powers in order to win. Sound familiar? Sound interesting? Sound intriguing? Yeah, you should give this one a look-see. It's a little bit different than what you may be used to because not only are you going to be battling back and forth, trying to chain, trying to combo, trying to, well, as the namesake says, react to what the other person is doing. You play in response um, to what they're doing in their chain comboing situation. You're also going to be trying to damage your opponent as well as control the board with your character as well as summons that are going to be available because you're basically trying to also complete your masterpiece on the board, a three card spread of your character's potential greatest work. And so doing so will grant you the power that you need to win the game, right? And that's the key to victory. Uh, this one really looks like it could be a hit as well. This is in the line of the two-player battle or skirmishers. But I mean, I have a copy. I'll have a review going live on the day of this one. And so this is an independent publisher as well that put out the Fire Emblem that's doing this as well. So this one has a little bit of a higher funding goal. I think they said that their funding goal is, is actually significantly higher in order to break even as a solo uh, publishing standpoint. So this one is going to be a real test of the market too to see what they can do to entice because Fire Emblem was more pre-order, uh, but this is going through crowdfunding now separately. So we'll see. I mean, the Fire Emblem one was like years in the making and this one has been around uh, in terms of making it for a while. So we're going to see what this one does differently compared to say the other more famous, well-known two-player duelers out there, Exceed, Yomi, Battlecon those ilk. So there you go, React launching on the 29th. And the next one up here is actually from Ludus Magnus, and it's a little bit of a different spin than what you're used to when you hear the names Ludus Magnus. This one is Rune Art. You're a band of Vikings trying to get mythical runes, but this one is actually deck construction with hand management, right? That's a little bit different for them. What you're going to be doing is a competitive one to four player game, and you're going to be trying to prove your worth to the Asgardian gods fighting alongside them in battle. You have a campaign situation over five scenarios, gradually getting more complex, culminating in a final battle where you're using your action deck made up of up to three of your heroes that activate the Vikings under their control 
that are going to unleash their skills and talents to help you in said battle in the first place. This is actually a little bit more of a skirmish style game, so it's going to be interesting to see how you can do the deck construction with the Vikings, with some of the asymmetry, what that's going to look like, how the scenarios are going to be different, what sort of objectives there are going to be in the scenarios in the first place, and what is the replayability look like in something like this. You know, how much deck construction is going to give you the variability, the player option skills and talents that are going to be different from one to another. I'm assuming some sort of skill or tech tree that's going to go along with it. So we'll see what this looks like from Ludus Magnus when it goes live on the 29th. The other one that we're going to see interesting test of the market is uh, the next one up from Alderac. AEG, and this is actually, it's not Rolling Heights, it's not Meeples and Monsters, those are the most recent ones, this is going to be Shake That City, and it has a <laughs> unique component where you've got a rubber band inside a box, and it uses it to line up these cubes in like a 3x3 three three grid automatically for you at the beginning of the game, and that's going to be the main key mechanism, the gimmick here in this one, and if it has anything like those other two games that I mentioned, there's probably going to be some sort of incentive or exclusive, not necessarily like super exclusive, but either exclusive in some way shape or form deluxified a little bit of gameplay and or a better price point because that's what we saw with say meeples and monsters this one is going to be more of a puzzle tiling though that you're playing over a series of rounds and you need to place corresponding building tiles of a single color on your board that correspond to roads factories shops homes all of those things and you have to pick a color other than what the active player is picking and then put them in the pattern on your board so it's going to be more of a tile placement pattern building obviously than with variable setup you get variable combinations that happen as you're completing and then bonus tiles depending on how you can organize them especially around the edge of the board so roads for example want to connect to the end of the board Factories want to be next to other factories and roads. Parks want to be next to homes and factories. So it's going to be a little bit of that uh, civ building, kind of almost, uh, at least by the description, reminds me more of a tiny town. So I would assume there's going to be some sort of bonus variable uh, completion uh, situation, like with tiny towns, right? You've got like four or five or six different ways that a road can score, and you choose one for that game. And so it gives me that sort of vibe, depending on your tile placement combinations, a completest bonus tiles around the edge of the board. That's how you're going to be scoring. So I know that this one's been out on the social media side of things and the content creator side of things uh, for a while, as well as Empire's End. So expect to see those videos to be hot and heavy when this goes live as well on the 29th. Next up, we're actually going to have a PAX game uh, coming out from Ion Game Design and Sierra Madre. This is PAX Hispanica. This is a re-implementation of a previous game called Lords of the Spanish Main. You are one of five different nationalities, including French, Spanish, English, and Dutch, that is going to basically try and be a pirate or an emancipator of the Caribbean. It's the 17th century, and so you're going to be sailing among those islands, transporting, plundering, smuggling, as well as, you know, just trying to get your booty, your treasure, uh, you know, away from the Spanish crown. So this is an asymmetric game, they say, of battling ships and treachery. So it's going to be very similar to the mechanics of other PAX games. Tableau, Market, Blind Auctioning, as well as four different career choices and victory paths that are going to be present for you. I am not super familiar with other PAX games. I have not really played anything uh, apart from I have PAX Premier in my collection. That's it. So if you're a PAX historical fan, this one should be potentially on your radar. What is the price point going to be? What is it going to entail? How deluxified is it going to be as more of, you know, that type of game? That's really been the incentive in these in the past in crowdfunding. So we'll see when it goes live on the 29th. Also on the 29th from Rock Girl Games, we have Alderman. This is going to be uh, set in the Hanseatic Trade Sea League, and it's a competitive Euro game for two to four players. So you're fighting, as you do in all Hansa games, for the top of the trade alliance. You're going to be trading, you're going to be trying to gather more wealth and develop influence over the region. Now, the interesting thing in this one is the weight on Board Game Geek actually has it a 4.5, so I'm not sure if it's actually that heavy or that complicated of a game. But I imagine that you'll you see a lot of that type of channel coverage when the game page goes live. If it really holds up to that, those are the you know usual folks that you're going to see. And so it should be interesting to see how this compares to other ones that you know even I've covered, Pampero or even Unconscious Mind recently, and what the depth or the complexity does in comparison to those. This is going to be um you know a very heavy Euro game of some sort. 
the thing I don't see in the board game description, the thing I don't see in it in general is, okay, what makes this different? You know, we talked about some of the differences in Pompro. We talked about differences in Unconscious Mind. We've talked about, you know, those sorts of things. Why get this over the other Euros? That's what this needs to show us. Two to four players. We're going to see when it goes live. Next up, we have actually from Brua Games. This is from the, you know, you may recognize the designer, you may not. The meeples are very characteristic of the previous game, which is being shipped to me right now. Keep the heroes out. Yep, same designer, same company. Uh, this is an expansion for the previously mentioned game, Night Parade. This is Night Parade of the Hundred Yokai cursed throne and so this is going to be an expansion for that it has about 1200 followers actually on the kickstarter page already the night parade of the hundred yokai is more of an area control manipulation with asymmetric powers type game and cursed throne is going to offer just more of that in the original game you have four asymmetric factions that you're going to be drafting and summoning in order to make the best parade you're going to be activating one of your parades to send meeples to haunt other islands move them around and fight after you have a certain number you can build a shrine which then allows you to send your yokai back to you once you have five shrines in your play you score victory points based on hidden objectives or cards in your hand so you can get a sense of what the gameplay is like and so like i mentioned the cursed throne is going to add a new type of action that's going to be going along with it called rain that changes the effect based on which clan is actually sitting on said cursed throne i think this is really kind of a cool interesting setup i i'm not really a big fan of area control in that sense but um, it's been relatively well received right now. And to have 1,200 followers for a game that you probably didn't hurry of on the pre-launch page for Kickstarter, that's relatively impressive as well. And if Keep the Heroes Out impresses, uh, expect to see more of this type from this company. And uh, we'll see how well it does when it launches live on the 29th. Next up, we actually have Hellbringer, which is an interesting, they say, solo slash co-op game from one to four players, which is more of a roguelike nature from Less Edition Smash. And it's a dark fantasy theme where you're going to be playing as a hero going into a dungeon trying to slay a demon. So you're venturing deeper and deeper. You're going Diablo-esque, gathering items, skills, and attributes, eliminating monsters to get you more powerful. And the core mechanic that they're utilizing here is something they call sight. Sight in the sense that you're classifying enemies based on your ability to see them and classify them in that way. The rule book is already over on the website. I'll put the link down below and they have it on Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia, one of the other ones as well. Uh, you have six different classes that you're going to be choosing from. Uh, it says about 45 minutes to play. Uh, you're going to be taking your turn followed by the enemy's turns, uh, multiple types of cards, uh, dice that are going to be rolled in terms of enemies and uh, poison attacks and damage dice and things like that. And so then it runs through the game mechanics of you know just what you need to know it's about a 20 page rule book over on their website so this one's going to be another test of the market where i don't really know what this is going to look like i don't know what the presentation is going to look like so i can see it going either way but it's definitely got a unique theme i like the idea of something like this uh, but the practicality of it and the Diablo-esque nature of it has been hard to capture and hard to accomplish on the tabletop. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the other one that was sort of uh, what people were calling Diablo-esque earlier, like a year or two ago, uh, that was sort of came out with mixed reviews. So uh, if this falls in line with things, I could see this going either way. And so this is probably one to just keep on your radar to see what the initial reaction and presentation looks like to see if it looks entertaining or intriguing at all. So there you go. Last up here, we have Air Postal. Air Postal is a game set in the 1920s where you are a pilot trying to open up the first air routes, but you're going to be taking leftover planes from World War I trying to do so. And these are often underpowered and outdated as per what they were back then. And so you're only going to be able to fly on the shortest of routes until you can upgrade technological as well as commercial upgrades in order to get more efficient aircraft at your disposal. You're going to be trying to earn glory points by flying to cities, completing objectives, and potentially even going all the way around the world as a first. You're going to be getting points based on your technological level of the aircraft, how much money you have, as well as sort of a pick up and deliver passengers, guests, and cargo along the way. So it's going to be a little bit interesting. It's from Platypus Games. We'll see what it looks like on the 29th. That's all I got. That's all I got. Like I said, I'm going to have a React video out on the day it launches. And then I'm going to have a review video out hopefully in the next week or so for Seoul. I've got my uh, short little video coming out as well, talking about things I'm super excited to get to the table. And then we're also going to be having a little bit of the golden age of crowdfunding and a few examples from that, from the recent past of names that you'll recognize and a little bit of thoughts about why, what, and in what shape and form. So that's what I got. That's what I got going on. Um, I'm not working this weekend, so that's awesome. 
I don't know what you guys are doing. I just, you know, I worked both the holiday and the Black Friday, so I'm all set to be done with work for a few days. So it'll be nice from that standpoint. I need to get some stuff played and um, just kind of see where things take me. I got Frosthaven, all 37 pounds of it, and Trespass Odyssey is also on its way to me, although it's delayed, and I still haven't touched Oathsworn. So, you know, I've got about 100 pounds worth of game right there that uh, is going to sit around. Now, what's going to shoot to the top of the queue, and what is that going to look like, too? Oh, that's going to be an interesting test of uh, my ability to get stuff to the table in the first place, rather than um, what I want to get to the table, too, you know? I wish I had a table that I could dedicate to leaving stuff out, because I would do that probably with Frosthaven right now. But I don't. Because I have a two-year-old that gets into everything and can't leave stuff alone. I have a container of Star Wars Destiny dice that's sitting next to the kitchen table. And every night after dinner or during dinner, he opens it up and plays with the yellow dice. Because yellow is his favorite color. And so most of them end up out of the container on a daily basis. And uh, we left a Jenga tower le open on the table the other night while I was uh, helping my other two kids. And uh, the two-year-old climbed half on the table and did Jenga by himself. He actually got two pieces out of the Jenga tower and put them on the top before he intentionally tipped it over. So... You know what? That's what I got in store for me. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you got. Uh, let me know how your November went. And you know what? I should do a November. I don't think I've done the November look back yet. I need to do the November look back, the November where are things at. And I think I just need to handle that side of things too. I don't know if I did one of those. Uh, I don't know if I put that the other one out. I need, to, I need to investigate. Time to sign off. End the video. Stay classy. See you around. Have a great day.